Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome to Culturize. This is the space where we get to talk, share, learn uh, culture, whether it's ethnic, whether it's native, whether it's social. And today I'm so excited because we're literally diving into the ocean with uh, probably one of the most prestigious ocean watermen in the world all the way from the shores of Makaha, Brian Kaolana. How are you, brother? Uh, aloha. Good. I want to be, uh, I got, I want to, first of all, a lay for you. So I got to move the equal. Um, we are a cultured show. I know you have a lot of these, but here's one from Culturize. And I have to give it to you because the CDC is, says that's how I got to do it now. But <laughs> mahalo for being here. Mahalo for right being on, here. Right that right lekukui right for you. Um, really so quick, as you put that on, your first recollection of the ocean. Mm -hmm. First, th as far back as you can, what's the first your first recollection of the ocean? Oh, God, man. Uh, you know, we were born and raised at Makaha Beach. Mm -hmm. You know, my father being the, he, before he was on life, he was on park keeper there. So our picture window was looking straight out at the wow. ocean. So, you know, a again, my whole life has been water, right? And that was a natural element. We all could swim before we mm -hmm. could walk. You know, so, I mean, when, when you talk about something that's natural, that's natural mm -hmm. to us guys. Because I always think, you know, as a, as a waterman, I always think, what is their first recollection? Um, I think about L Lanai and us, our, our grandfather. This, this is how our, our rec my recollection of water. My grandfather grabbed us, threw us in the ocean. He goes, you're not going to drown because your body not going to let you drown. <laughs> and we, that's how we learned. I guess that was his way of teaching us how to swim. Um, but you were, you already knew, you already knew genealogically and also through dad and through the family water was going to be your thing yeah um growing up do you remember your first lesson in water that that maybe dad or, or, or somebody else had taught you like you, you know you've always been in the water but what was the first thing they told you that you remember oh god yeah I, uh, gee that's a hot <laughs> question <laughs> was was it you know we all think of oh you know turn your back to the ocean or you you know you 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 kilo, you observe before you go into the water. What what are things that you remember? You, you, you know, it's like uh, it's like asking me, um, you know, what what do you do in your playground? You know, what, right. what, what do you do in in the place that you're happiest? Mm -hmm. You know, so for us was you know how do you stop us from not going in? You know, so <laughs> that I, I think that was the thing from us. My my mom was worried. I mean, so the story I heard before my memory uh -huh. right is um. My mom was upstairs, right? Uh -huh. Was on two story kind of a frame house, uh -huh. and she was washing clothes. And you know, waves was like eight feet, and she heard this tourist downstairs saying, "Hey, look at that dark guy with that with that white baby out there surfing these giant waves." And she looked out; it was silhouetted, and she yelled down at my dad and goes, "Hey, honey, look! This this guy out there, went, crazy guy, with a kid surfing," and he never answered. And she looked at the silhouette real good, and it was my dad. So I was three months old <laughs> when when he was out in eight foot surf, right? So you can literally say your first wave that was eight feet. Eight feet. Who can say yeah. that? Yeah, and and again, you know, here's here's the other thing, right? Everybody misinterpret our way of gauging waves, because here's the big thing: they right always here. say all the Hawaiians mm -hmm. judge the waves from the back, and and you can't see the wave from the back, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But I always say. There's a difference between a Hawaiian way of thinking and a Western way of thinking. Thank you. Because there's the, the counter or the hidden meaning mm. of, of what's being interpreted. So for us growing up, my parents or my uncles or my father would say, mm. paddle to the eight-foot lineup, paddle to the four-foot mm. lineup. So it was always the geography about where it breaks, not how high it is. So it was always telling about, you know, like the, the topography of the bottom. <sighs> so it's the area, not the height. That is... That is, not a lot of people realize that. No. And, and, and that's a very Hawaiian thing because you think about it, we talk about kilo and observation. Dad and uncles and everybody before you, they knew these things. And the wave height, like you said, wasn't even the thing they were looking at initially. No. It was, wow. It was always the area at where it breaks. Because if you understand the reef, you mm. understand the secret into the surf. <laughs> you, you know, or, or like when I was small, my dad would say, um, if you're going to surf, just mm. go past the turtles because the turtles not stupid. They know exactly where to be, you know. I just learned something today. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, you think you know, you don't even. It's, it's like the ocean, though. It's For the rest of the world, they think 
it's it's they haven't discovered what they say so much but you talk to a hawaiian it's it's like oh yeah it's like my backyard i know everything under above between and the animals in it say that again pay attention to the turtles yeah yeah <laughs> you, you know in, in hawaiian culture it's all about understanding the details right you know the oldest language we have in polynesia mm. is the language of the ocean oh. that is the oldest language that's heavy yeah. how important the ocean to hawaiians we're going to find this out we're on culturized right now we're talking and sharing ocean culture a lot of times people think ocean they think surf it's, it's way more than that we're going into the depth of the ocean with the guy with the knowledge of that from the ohana the keolana ohana we're talking to brian right now so if you want to join us uh that's where we do it culturize.com youtube i gotta thank kaimi okikai for my clothing come back with us Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHIGHTHING. Hey, welcome back to Culturized. My name is McCunny. We are uh, diving into the depths of the ocean uh, from a cultural perspective. And, and you know, you, you may think you know the ocean, even, even if you've been in it. We, we live in Hawaii. We're surrounded by it. But we continue to learn every single day. I just learned now. Pay it, pay it. The kilo skills, I always say it, the observation skills of Hawaiians. And I love the fact that you said the first language in Hawaii was the language of the ocean. Um, and you were taught all these things throughout. Now, when you were taught these things, of course, a lot of it was by observation. What was more, observation or the fact that dad would sit you down and be like, this, this, and this? Or did you just have to, you were right there next to him in the water and you were just observing everything? What was more, it was a good balance of teaching? You, you know, the balance of, of Hawaiian kids, mm -hmm. right? It is like, it's all about when you're growing up, just having fun, mm -hmm. you know? So my, my dad would say, hey, you know, jump in the ocean because that's to us that was a place where it was safe away from land away from trouble all those kind of things and learning and and my dad would tell everybody go to school because mm -hmm. you're going out there you're going to learn mm -hmm. so ocean going to be school but if you don't pay attention then you're going to church because now you're <laughs> underwater talking to god <laughs> that's the that's the greatest thing ever if you don't go to school you're going to, oh man um Ocean to Hawaiians. It's the la first language. Um, for some people that don't realize that, how important is the ocean to Hawaiians? Oh, God. I yeah. mean, it, we could go on, but in, in your manao, in your, in your thing. You know, and I, and I say this around the world, globally, mm -hmm. that we're not divided by land, but mm -hmm. we're connected by water. Nice. And, and our biggest nation is the ocean nation. You know, everyone who swims in our ocean, everyone who walks on our beach becomes part of our family. That's always been the Hawaiian way. You know, so it's, it's sharing that knowledge. It's sharing everything that you have and stuff also too. And that's just been, you know, it is. Your first, what was the first thing you peeled to or, or got close to in the ocean as far as activity? Was it fishing? Was it diving? Was it surfing? Was surfing first? What What did you gravitate to first in the ocean? You know, it, it's funny because I, I got asked this a lot of times. Uh -huh. You know, when you go um, like North Shore, uh -huh. you got long borders, short right. borders, body borders, wind surfers, kite surfers. And, you know, in Macau, it was different because it was always about the lifestyle and, mm -hmm. and not the labels. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more about the content. So. You know, I'm not a short border. I'm mm -hmm. not a long border. You know, I, you know, the ocean feeds us. Is, the mm -hmm. ocean consults us. It it's, uh, finds balance. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it, it is our icebox. You know, and, and again, uh, you know, going back to the Hawaiian way of thinking, and that's the thing, we were stewards of the ocean. We were stewards yes. of the land. So ownership was never part of our culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we wouldn't own the land. Right. The land owns us. Mm -hmm. The ocean owns us. But in that, it is that symbiotic relationship that because everything for us is alive, yeah. you know, and, and we take care of it, so it takes care of us, you know. And, and it's only now that society trying to find the new word sustainability. <laughs> Isn't you know? that strange? Yeah. I always think that's strange because it, it, it's almost as though it's like me telling you about the ocean. Mm. <laughs> hey, sustainability, Hawaii. It's like, oh, wait, what? We, yeah. We've been here, done yeah. that. Um, when, it, when it comes to the ocean, and you've, you've been teaching, you've been um, 
sharing with people. If there's somebody on a plane coming over right now, never been to Hawaii, never been to, they've landlocked their whole entire life. What's one of the first things you would tell them when they get to the shore? Oh, man. You, you know, people come here to fulfill their fantasy, mm-hmm. but they get whacked with reality. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and they don't see the beauty and the beast mm-hmm. together. They just see the beauty. Right. You know, and then when the beast shows up, they don't know how to contend <laughs> with that, you know. So, you know, for us, and then when you see, you know, three-year-old kids in a short break, yeah. w- what you got to understand, those kids are professors. They're educated. They're engineers. You know, <laughs> they, they know the creation causative effect of what's going to happen, you know. And, and sometimes they'll suck the tourists in. You know, see, I, I, I've said that before on Lanai, and, and because so, a, a tourist had said, Well, these kids are playing, mm-hmm. I go, But watch, watch these kids for you, watch the kids, and watch what the kids are doing, yeah, right. And, and that always amazes me. So, if somebody's if you're getting off a plane, would it be safe to say when you get to the ocean, just sit there for a bit? Just, oh, you know, you know, observation is everything, mm-hmm. right? You know, study, you mm-hmm. know, and try to mimic and clone yourself, you know, with uh, the whole thing is, you know, to understand the environment. I tell you one good thing to watch. If you watch this thing, The Octopus My Teacher. Uh, it's Netflix, I gotta see that. I keep seeing it. That is amazing. That guy became one real water man, you know. And, and if you apply that concept in life in general mm-hmm. or wherever you at, because it's all about, you know, we talk about respect, right? Mm-hmm. Respect is educating yourself. Hold that thought. We're gonna get uh, even deeper into the ocean with Brian Keolana right here on Culturized. Aloha Termite and Pest Control, your local and leading pest and termite control solution in the state. Always providing you superior service with Aloha. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us. This is Culturize. We're diving deep into the ocean, uh, the culture of the ocean. And we're sitting with Brian Keolana. We talked earlier about what is that Netflix special, Octopus and Me? The, the octopus, my teacher. My teacher. What? Yeah. I mean, it's amazing that you said that guy became a waterman. Um, what is it that you liked about that? What, what? You, you know, it gives you the point of when we when I say about respect, respect the ocean, and respect is about educating yourself about mm-hmm. all the finer details, you know, in everything, in life in general. Mm-hmm. And, and he went deep inside, and, and that's what made him a, a true waterman. But, you know, um, I think what I was leaning to that is like, even for me, it's, you know, we know a lot, but there's mm-hmm. a lot more to learn. So, you know, one of the things right now that I'm doing, I'm going to work with this professor from UH. Um, so he educated me about the, the uhu, which the uhu is like the cow of the mm-hmm. sea and how important that parrotfish or that uhu is to our environment because it cleans up the, the coral, it creates sand, it makes our beaches. And I remember as a small kid, how abundant we had mm-hmm. uh, as, as far as the, the uhu fishes. So, it's kind of like trying to re-educate ourselves as Hawaiians of how important to try and get that, that uh, you know, part of that, you know, environment back in. Because not a lot of people think about under the ocean. No. Right? Yeah. They, they think about the surface. How do we get people to think that way, like the octopus, my teacher, and like you about the ocean? What 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 would be step one? I mean, I know it's it's a hard thing to think about, but how do we get people to think about the ocean like like Hawaiians did? Yeah, y- you know, it, it's again it, thinking Hawaiian and thinking mm-hmm. Western. You just gotta separate yourself mm-hmm. and understand that how you know we are part of a whole, mm-hmm. not the controlling of that whole. You know, so you know, be part of the world, not controlling of the world. I think that's the difference. That makes sense because now that I think about it, it's like. Even when you're in the water, when when you say, you know, don't panic. Mm -hmm. You're trying to control the ocean. Just let it kind of take care of you. Um, When you teach about the ocean, you teach your kids, you teach the family, you've expanded. You're you're now teaching the world. Mm -hmm. Um, Have you found any other cultures outside of Hawaii and outside of the South Pacific that view the ocean the same way? In maybe in certain cultures, I, I think we're a hybrid mm-hmm. of, of different entities. And I think also, too, it's because um, guys like me travel so much and we learn from different cultures like Australians and New Zealand and Japan. And, th- you know, I take the best of the best and incorporate that mm-hmm. within our own culture. You know, so it's a hybrid, you know, I think. 
it's, uh, it's going to sound kind of biased, but do you think Hawaiians are ahead of the game when it comes to cult, uh, ocean I, culture? I'm not being biased. I just being we real. Know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah like because always somebody's like, uh. um, here's a question I, I always thought about. I remember when I was in California, they there was a, there was a time where they were they wanted to name the Surf City USA, um. And I was surprised that it was like Huntington Beach. It was Santa Cruz. I don't even know if Hawaii was in there. No. Um, how how did that happen? I, I do you I, know? Yeah, <laughs> I just think our own people, as far as in government, just don't realize the, the true treasures we have. Whereas the rest of the world, I mean, I I see it. So I travel with my dad around the world. Mm-hmm. And they treat my father like the king. Right. And they treat our culture as it, as as the Hawaiian kingdom that we have, you know. And then when we come back home, yeah. you know, it's like, ah, you it's know. Ra- it, I know. It's the prince and a papa kind of thing. I remember because I was doing a radio show there. Somebody called and they said, hey, what do you think? I'm like, I can't think. But that's because those two places really don't have anything to the connection. I mean, there's a connection. But Really? Um, I, I always wanted to ask you that question, but we're talking about ocean culture. If you're joining us, uh, Brian Keolana, you come from a family of culture. What is the furthest place you've taught people about the ocean? I know you're doing a lot in Japan. Mm-hmm. Where's a place that you went uh, and you were like, man, I got to teach these people about the ocean. Uh, think about that. Culturize. That's what we're doing. I want you to think about the ocean, not only the surface, but the depth of it and what it means to our people as Hawaiians here in Hawaii. So that's what we do on Culturize. We talk, we share, we learn culture. I uh, got to thank Kaimi Okekai, Star Advertiser. We're going to get into a lot more with Brian Keolana right here on Culturized. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HiFiCU.com. That's HiFi, letter C, letter U, dot com. We are diving deep in the culture of the ocean, uh, sitting with Brian Kaulana, a uh, waterman, uh, which is, which is a, when did that term come about? Oh, waterman. I, you know, when I was a kid, we always mm. knew my father, mm. Greg No, Buzzy mm. Trent, George Down. They, they were surfers, but... Mm watermen because they would dive they would, they would fish everything and, and that was that before and and i think you know later on it became watered down you know it just mm. became a, a marketing mm. thing and stuff also too but yeah when at one point in your <clears throat> your love of the ocean and your career did you realize that whoa i need to take ocean safety the next step even more because you know we you know, love, yeah, lifeguards, man, the things that they do. But now you had to take it a step further because you've seen there was more to learn about safety in the ocean. When did, when did that come about? When, when did that happen? Uh, I, I mean, I can tell you right off the bat, it, um, it really changed mm-hmm. when I was doing water world stunts oh. because I seen the greatest stuntmen um, designing the dangers, mm-hmm. controlling the chaos, mm-hmm creating the safety perimeters. There was the the best, you know, to me, lifesavers mm-hmm. around. And seeing that process was like, you know, and having my lifeguard background just made me think even more. And then uh, when I came back home, the next thing was I s- got involved with the uh, Army um, uh, Safety Community. Mm-hmm. They had a, a risk management class. Mm-hmm. And I never put risk management with safety together was always safety, you know, everything right. was built on safety. And to, to, you know, just kind of focus on risk management was something like, wow, this is heavy. So I learned the art of risk mitigation, risk mm-hmm. management, the process. And that's the one that really pushed through everything to what we have right now. So uh, you, you're the go-to right now, any production, I I don't want to say just in Hawaii. Any production that has to deal with the ocean, they're they're calling you guys, right? Pretty much, but it's not just the ocean. I think in stunts in general, also mm-hmm. too, you know. So in in our stunt community, mm-hmm. we know the best uh, guys that go on fire, that drive, that flies, wow. that falls, that fight, and and you surround yourself with the best people. Mm-hmm. So of course you're going to um, absorb that also too and learn, and vice versa, share, you know, also too. Ocean safety, risk management, cr- 
craziest rescue that you can remember or think of that you had to do personally? Oh God, I you know I, I have a bunch of things, <laughs> right? You know, I I think the hardest for me sometimes is when people run up and thanking me of, you know, I, I rescued mm-hmm. them and mm-hmm. I totally forget when, where, what time, but that was the biggest thing in their life. Um, you know, the most famous one was a uh, guy got swept over the ledge in a sea cave for two and a half hours. And uh, I remember seeing that. Yeah, and that got filmed and came on Dateline and Rescue 911 and all these other, you know, rescue things. What's the mindset when you're in that position? Because you, you have to keep it together because you're the one. What were you thinking in that particular scenario? I, re- I remember there was jet ski. Mm-hmm. Guy kept going in and out. Yeah. What do you have to do at that point? In, in you, you know, it's, it's applying all your training mm-hmm. and all your risk management mm-hmm. process, right? A lot of times, it's never let your emotions control your actions. And it's always like about the training that you've mm-hmm. done prior to that that was a lot more extreme than real life. Mm-hmm. You know, so we train extreme so that real life is easy. You know, so that's the difference in things too. And, and then for us, everything that we do, like in surfing, mm-hmm. the only reason you're good is surfing becomes a subconscious act versus oh conscious. God. Because if you think <laughs> what you're going to do in the ocean, it's too late. You know, so you Say have, that again when you, what, say it again. So, you know, everything you do in the ocean has to be a subconscious act. Mm. Because if you're consciously thinking about what to do, it's already too late. Remember that, my <laughs> friends. Remember that. Um, the, the fact of ocean safety, risk management, Japan, production. How many productions are you working on currently right now? <laughs> <laughs> without getting in trouble, <laughs> without, get, okay, without getting in trouble, we're we're, get, we're getting deep into the ocean culture uh, right here on Culture Rise with Brian Kaolana. You want to get the extended version? You got to hit up our YouTube page. Thanks to our advertiser Kaimio Kikai uh, for the clothing. You got any questions? Once you get to YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Comment down below, Brian. <laughs> Welcome back to Culture Rise. Uh, if you're joining us on YouTube, this is the extended version. We couldn't let him go. I mean, we could talk hours about the ocean, uh, the importance of the ocean to the Hawaiian culture, to our people. Um, you know, Brian Keolana and Ohana Keolana, um, water people, they've been doing that. They're genetically designed uh, to be in the water. Um, and, and we want to talk ocean safety because you have now created a lot of things um, risk management in the ocean. Do you do classes? Do you do how does how does this work for you? I mean, do people call you and be like, just show us? Yeah, I mean, like anything, right? What's valuable is is time. Time we don't mm-hmm. all have. You know, trying to manage that time. So I've created different entities. Mm-hmm. You know, I still train the city lifeguards. Um, I still get involved in some of you know the fire department training. Um, train some of the mm-hmm. um, SWAT team guys wow. you know, also too. So I also teach underwater self-defense, you know, so um, it, it just uh, various different ones. But the biggest one mm-hmm. is the big wave risk assessment group Wow. where we've now been viral going around the world training surfers because I- if you think about it, right, there's mm-hmm. so much lifeguards that is mm-hmm. well-trained. But if you ask any surfer, have you ever assisted or rescued anyone in your life? Mm. You, and you're in a room, you tell them, raise their hand. Raise your hand. Have you? Mm, no. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to, um, well, to say, yeah, well, I get, not in big waves. No, no, it doesn't have to be. Oh, just in general. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah see? I have. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. I always say everyone has a story. It's not about mm. my story. It's about mm. their story. So they, you know, have... Like you ask Kelly Slater, have you uh, ever rescued someone? Uh, he would have tons right. of stories, you know. So surfers, there are more surfers than there are lifeguards. So building that safety mm. in that surfing community makes surfing a lot more safer. Smart. Yeah. See, the, the foresight of that. And, and it, it's funny because I, I I didn't think about it. Yeah, we've saved many people, but I thought that's just... Um, but there's there's ways to do that now. So now you're teaching surfers... What is what is the difference when it when it comes to rescues? Even if it is, is there a difference, shoreline, deep ocean, cliffside, 
or big wave? Level of risk. Yeah. Is it all the same? No. It, it always changes mm -hmm. and, and how you prepare and how you adapt mm -hmm. to it. And also telling yourself how not to be a victim yourself. So mm -hmm. how not to escalate the situation. Because sometimes it, it will just take to identify and make a call so you can have the right resource. And it's about time, you know, because you only have so much time to perform that rescue. What goes into big wave you're talking about? What goes into big wave rescue? Um, just sitting on that, that reef and watching these guys, what kind of training do you go through? I mean, is, is it obviously observation? Mm -hmm. um, what other things do you teach when it comes to big wave rescues? Well, a lot of it is really yourself. Can you physically mm -hmm. survive in that situation? You know, can you hold your breath for that long? You know, can you get to that person quick enough and get them out of that, what I call red zone mm -hmm. into a green zone, you know, from being dangerous to safe. And it may, may be just like a couple feet away that safety exists. How, how much of it is mental and how much is physical, you think? I would say, I would say 90% mental. <laughs> and 10% physical. I, I can't even imagine. I've The biggest I've probably surfed was 10 feet. But I can't even imagine you because on, on the ski, somebody wipes out. You see it on videos all the time, and you rush right in there. It's like with almost as though, like you were saying earlier, it's second nature. You mm. can't think. You already know what you're doing. Um, you... Can you train for, how, how long would you consider somebody training until they can sit on a ski in the lineup? Well, we, we also have, I have a business where we train the special forces and um, we have a class that is um, made for one week. They don't know anything. And by the end of the week, they're highly trained. One, wow. Yeah, yeah. The difference is they don't know how to read the water. Mm -hmm but they know how to operate this, the, the equipment. So, you know, it, there's another class that I'm making of a waterman's class mm -hmm. of just, just involving and understanding how to read and how to, you know, speak to the ocean or the ocean can speak to you. That's the most interesting thing, a class on how, and, and, and we don't get that anymore. So that to me is, it's, that's the, that's the Hawaiian concept, sharing, things you've learned through generation and do you think it has subsided or because you now are bringing that back mm -hmm. but you're not only keeping it within the family you're keeping it you know community and worldwide do you think we need to do that more as just Hawaiian families or even just local families mm -hmm. do you think it would be a good idea to to sit in one of your classes I mean even just even if you're not say you just go to the beach on the weekends yeah, I mean, my, my class is every day, you know, mm. we exist, whether we work or play. Mm. And, and your brother knows, you know, he's <laughs> learning every day. <laughs> I, which which <laughs> I, I, I will always still be amazed till this day that you got him to paddle the channel on a stand-up yeah. paddleboard. I, I remember he would, he would, I would see him and he would kind of be a wreck physically, but at the same time you can see this thing um, mentally reconnecting yeah. and and that was that was amazing to me because he always, he always talked about it the ocean to you that was your playground that was your safe place um, is it also is, is it what, what's the word I'm looking for is is uh, when you're having a bad day yeah is that is that your your pool honua is that where you go yeah. to yeah even if you're in it all day? It, it, it is. It's my reset button, right? You know, That's so w when I go in the ocean, it, it's, again, it's my school and it's my church. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll go there, but it's mm -hmm. also, you know, uh, our icebox. Mm -hmm. It's, the ocean is everything to us, you know, but also to, you know, s saying that, I, I tell a lot of people the the land is connected to the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's one and the same mm -hmm. because when you read the land, you know, mm -hmm. and you see all the valleys, that mm -hmm. fresh water will cut channels, you know, down to the ocean and create the surf spots that we surf. Mm -hmm. But it also feeds all the, that environment of the little microbes and the nutrients and the small fish and the big fish. So life is, is forever circling, you know, each other. And not a lot of people realize that about the ocean. Um, ocean activities, have you seen things increase? Like, 
I, I'm, I'm always amazed at the, the new things that are coming up, you know, from foil. I, I, I was, where was I the other day? Um, what, it, it's, not, it's not a kite. Oh, yeah. it, it looks like a paper airplane inflated. Yeah. What is that? The wing. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was watching the poor thing. I was watching this couple. They went out with a foil board, and they each had a, a wing, and they were just getting blasted. The wind was howling. It was yeah. on the east side, and they would paddle out. And that was in a moment I was like, okay, may, I'm, I'm there with my son, but I'm watching them. Mm. Um, what do you say to people like that? Because they were obviously tourists, and I think they rented it. Oh. it, it looked, and they, they would paddle out. They never got up. Yeah. I mean, the thing was just flapping. <laughs> they would drift back into shore, and they would try and paddle out again, and they would drift it, and then they were getting to the rocks, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I should go over there. Yeah. What do you say, where does, where does that have to stop? Is it, is it rental companies, or is it education to people coming to Hawaii? You know, if you have the right person that can train mm. you, you, you can do wonders, right? Mm. But it's picking that environment, and it's always having that process of learning. So crawl, walk, run, mm -hmm. fly. But you got to crawl before you can walk. You got to walk before you can run, you know? Because I'm amazed that, that there's these rental companies that would, that would give these people, oh, yeah, here, take a foil board and this kite yeah. and go to the east side because it's windy. That, that's the, you know, you, you pick in the most extreme spot to, <laughs> to pick. You know, it's like I'm going to drive in the Indianapolis 500 mm -hmm. and jump in this supercharged car. Do you think there should be a thing with these surfboard rental companies and kayak rent that that uh, hey you got to know that these people don't have experience in it so don't rent them that yeah i i, I think they should be catered to if they're going to mm -hmm. learn and right. be shown because just giving somebody <laughs> that's, i mean it's <laughs> like hey go play with this razor blade that's exactly you know? how i thought about it because i watched them because they were just all over there trying to take the thing out of their car trying to put the foil on the board and you already know right off the bat okay I, I don't I don't think they know what they're doing because the wind is howling and he's he's holding the the wing up against the wind mm -hmm. and I'm like you want to go over there and so just hold it flat so mm -hmm. the wind blows through yeah. um, when it comes to that how we have our lifeguards do you think tourists have a false sense of safety yeah I, I think regardless whether it's tourists or locals well, yeah yeah pe people can have on false sense and safety um when they see equipment like you know personal watercraft or they mm -hmm. see you know the atvs on the beach everybody think that oh i'm gonna be safe because people watching me y you know you brought up one one good point even like the hydrofoils because <clears throat> sometimes you know on the governing um rules or enforcement mm -hmm. it's kind of like you know we're looking towards other people to govern ourselves mm -hmm. And I always say, govern ourselves, I, you know, rule ourselves, mm. you know, like Makaha, for example, we don't allow hydrofoiling mm -hmm. there. We self-enforce that. Yeah. We self-enforce ourselves. I like that. We don't do it. I like So that. if we don't do it, we expect yeah. you not mm. to do it. We enjoy our area. I always say Makaha is the perfect example of everything that has to do, not only with the ocean, but even the shore and the water. And I love that. It's community. That, that's exactly what it is. We take care of the community. We enforce it. You're expected to act that way. Is there something that we can do? Um, I know we talked about it earlier, I think. Um, like responsibility to Kuliana. We're going to go back. And, and, and the last question is, how do we get people to see the ocean as you do? How do we make it their responsibility like you just talked about? You know you're going to Magaha. You don't bring your hydrofoil. You know you're going to go to, to Point Panic. You know you're not going to surf because that's for the body borders. Mm -hmm. How do we get people to see the ocean your way? You, you know, like anything, to know yourself is mm -hmm. to know your values. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's what you value. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have many values that we respect. And do you respect the same values? Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing is to align yourself with the people who value that, you know, treasure. And you have this, it, it's, a, it's a Kuleana, pro what, what we were talking with Lanai earlier uh, about a contract, a Kuleana contract or something. What, what is that about? So I, I wanted to break down, you know, like someone asked me if I to, was to run one master waterman's class. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I if you want to really be involved, I got to get to know you, but you got to get to know yourself first. So it's all these values of commitment, mm. you know, so it's a commitment of learning, 
you know, to yourself, to a commitment of seeing the details, of commitment of listening to details, of commitment of being humble, you know. So it's all these commitments that you would read to yourself mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And I tell people in 30 days, uh -huh. if you read that after 30 days, come and see me because now you teachable. We, you, you gotta, that can work in every aspect of life. That is the most amazing thing, a kuleana contract, because that's exactly it. You get to know yourself. Um, they, I think they should put that on an airplane when people coming over, because we fill out that, what is that thing we fill out? The Department of whatever, State of Hawaii thing. What you're bringing in. Yeah, I think they should include that and say this this is I know you're only going to be here for a little while but this is your responsibility yeah this is what you have to do when you come to Hawaii mm -hmm. uh, Brian Keolana mahalo 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 for sharing your manao and your ike uh, of the ocean with us uh, if you're watching on YouTube you have any questions how to how to uh, find him well you probably can't because he's really really busy <laughs> right now without saying who they are how many productions are you on right now oh right now it's two but I got like three or four more kind of in a pot. Oh, man. Uh, he's a busy guy, so thank you very much for being here. Uh, aloha to mom and dad and the brother. We got to get the brothers and sisters on the show as well. We're going to try and do that. This is Culturized, my friends. We talk, we share, we learn culture, whether it's native, ethnic, or social. Deep into the ocean, respect it. Aloha. Aloha.